Welcome back. Now, we expect the Republican National Convention in Cleveland to be a wild scene. Well, you can be sure that one man that's going to add to the mayhem is Roger Stone. What about the issue of Donald Trump's hitman, Roger Stone? The RNC should move to ban Roger Stone from the convention. And I would note that Mr. Stone is a man who has 50 years of dirty tricks behind him. Roger Stone is a thug. He's a sleazeball. He's a hatchet man for Donald Trump. In the past two weeks, Roger Stone has been accused of planting the story in the National Enquirer, accusing Ted Cruz of having five mistresses. He has been banned from MSNBC for a series of vile tweets and has been attacked by both the left and the right for planning what some believe will be a week of violent protests in Cleveland during the Republican National Convention. It's an uprising. The Trump campaign is an insurrection. Uh, it, it's an insurgency. It, it's a revolt against the ruling class. And that's what the uh, March on Cleveland is all about. Hey, brother. How are you? Good, good, good. Thanks for doing this. We caught up with Stone at his lair in Oakland Park, a veritable shrine to his mentor, Richard Nixon. This is the tour that I was on for Richard Nixon in 1968. They give you those at the end of the campaign. Stone has spent his entire life prowling the dark alleys of politics, working on the presidential campaigns of Ronald Reagan, Bob Dole, and George W. Bush. The polls do say that I won the debate. Now his focus is on getting longtime friend Donald Trump the nomination. What happens outside the hall is just as important as what happens inside the hall. Stone is calling it a stop the steal rally because he claims Cruz and others in the GOP are plotting to take the nomination away from Trump at the convention. The voices of the people who voted in the primaries have a right to be heard. These delegates didn't elect themselves, we elected them. We need a show of force to demonstrate to the politicians that the voters' votes in the primaries cannot be just disallowed, that it's not the party leaders who make this choice, it's the people. Aren't you trying to intimidate those delegates that are on the convention floor? First of all, we're not dealing with Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm here. These are hardened politicians, uh, and they know what they're doing. Uh, no, I think we have an absolute right to address our democratically elected delegates. They shouldn't be allowed to hide if what they're doing uh, is, uh, is politically and legally tricky. As soon as Stone announces plans for the rally, cable news blew up. And for Roger Stone to now say that he's going to give out the hotel rooms of delegates, it, it's, it's a mob. That's a clear threat of violence. This is not about violence. But who came up with the hashtag days of rage? I did because our people are very, very angry. We are angry. But you can see how it becomes a fine line. Well, I, I think, uh, first of all, I think you're nitpicking. But okay. uh, no, it's the Stop the Steal rally. Uh, it is every time it's been discussed on the media, it is very clear that we are talking about peaceful, nonviolent protest. But in numbers, there's strength. Stone believes Republican leaders are using so-called Trojan horse delegates to thwart Trump's nomination. A Trojan horse delegate is one that has chosen to be a Trump supporter. But in fact, the party leaders know these delegates will break away from Trump as soon as they're able to and will vote for rules at the convention that hurt Donald Trump. Uh, so it is there that the game will be afoot. It's there that the kingmakers uh, plan the big steal. Uh, and the answer is... Thousands of people outside protesting that. It, it reminds me very much of the Brooks Brothers riot. The infamous Brooks Brothers riot. It was Stone who organized that protest outside the Miami-Dade election offices that stopped the recount in 2000 and helped swing the election to George W. Bush. Let's take an example. Uh, Donald Trump won Arizona. The Arizona delegates are staying at the Holiday Inn. Half of the delegates there are, are not Trump delegates, and we can identify who those people are. If you are from Arizona, you should go to that hotel. Find your delegates and engage them. I don't know if they're in the coffee shop or if they're in their room. If they're in the room, call their room and tell them you want to talk to them. You have a right to petition your delegates. You elected them. So you'll provide the list of names and hotels and rooms and that sort of yes. thing. Yes. Uh, no concern again that 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 could that could escalate. 
Well, I, look, we have to expect that these are that these are uh, adults, and that it would be counterproductive. And I think we will stress this in our rallies, in our speeches, in our communications materials. We're not looking to rumble. We're looking to outnumber. That's the point. But Stone isn't stupid either. Here's what he said as we were setting up for the interview. When did I say violence? I didn't say go to their rooms and kick the out of them. Mm -hmm. right. That should happen, you know, that would be beyond <laughs> my control, but. My focus is on the street theater that is necessary to make a statement to the entire United States and that will happen outside the hall. What is the statement that those folks who you want to rally in Cleveland are going to make? How would you encapsulate it? Thou shalt not steal. Of course, what Stone or Trump might consider stealing, others might say that Ted Cruz is simply out hustling Trump when it comes to lining up delegates. Can't you at least respect the fact that no. Ted Cruz is using the rules to his advantage? No, no, because I, I think it's illicit. There is no shortage of irony in the notion that Roger Stone, who has a tattoo of Richard Nixon on his back, is complaining about something being illicit or unfair. This is a man who has been called the professional lord of mischief, a dashing, colorful artist of the underhanded, and a street fighter skilled in the dark arts of politics. Stone's two recent books, The Clinton's War on Women and Jeb Bush and the Bush Crime Family, are veritable screeds. And he was the only person quoted by name in the National Enquirer story alleging Ted Cruz had five mistresses, leading folks in the Cruz campaign to blame Stone for the story. Stone said the Enquirer called him. Politics is not beanbag. This is a contact sport in the United States. Uh, you know, we take our politics very seriously. People can tut tut all they want, but yeah, it's true that Andrew Jackson's uh, uh, opponents put out the word that he was making his wife available sexually to his predecessor in the White House. Uh, this is this is part and parcel of our of our politics. People like gossip. They like the salacious. White papers on the economy, not so much. Why do you think you're such a lightning rod for controversy? Do you seek it, or does it just find you? Uh, uh, because I'm outspoken, because I say what other people think, because uh, I'm not politically correct, and also because I understand that in the world of the internet, uh, and in the world of cable TV, and in the world of talk radio, when there's this enormous glut of information, uh, you have an obligation to be interesting. You have to be a little over the top to get any attention to communicate any idea. The only thing worse in politics than being wrong is being boring. So I try never to be boring. Are you ever concerned that in the goal of not being boring, of being interesting, that you cross a line? Yes, on occasion I'm probably a little intemperate, and in some cases I have backtracked and regretted those things. In a few cases I have apologized. When Can I, you give me a for instance? I took down a number of tweets in which I made comments uh, about people that I thought were excessive. I, don't, I reject the idea that they were that they were sexist or racist, but they, but they were probably over the top. As the Trump campaign got underway last year, Stone did a bit of house cleaning, taking down a series of tweets he had posted back in 2012 that he knew could be problematic. You're currently banned from CNN and MSNBC. Their loss. Despite his recent bans, Stone remains a media darling. The New York Times even featured his dapper sense of fashion. I have some Frame some of the letters that President Nixon uh, wrote me, a check that Richard Nixon wrote to my ch campaign for young Republican national chairman. You loved Richard Nixon? I, I think I have a balanced view of him. I mean, he was a mentor. I learned an enormous amount from him. Um, he was both very great and very flawed. He had, uh, he had great attributes, uh, but he also had, uh, you know, some underlying paranoia. I've got my Donald Trump doll. But unfortunately, when you push the button, it just keeps saying you're fired. So I've stopped doing that. <laughs> well, you should you should feel that that's appropriate. With In you. a certain sense, although I wasn't fired, I quit. Stone and Trump officially parted ways last fall, supposedly over Trump's this refusal to end his feud with Fox News and Megyn Kelly. Others argue he was pushed out because he repeatedly clashed with Trump's campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. So what is your current relationship to Donald Trump? We're friends. I'm an FOT. Uh, I'm proud to say that I am a friend of his for almost 40 years. 
Uh, I have no formal nor informal role in his campaign. I don't clear anything I say or write. Um, I don't work for his campaign. Uh, I think I've been very effective as a surrogate on his behalf. That trying to stop Trump is like stepping in front of a hurtling freight train. I've been uh, proud to defend him on Fox and on CNN. Uh, but how often do you talk to him? From time to time. Okay. I mean, not, not on a daily basis, but from time to time. Yeah, I'm just finishing up here. I'll be free in just a little bit. And while he says he has no role in the campaign, his influence seems evident. The phone ring all the time? Constantly. It was an AP reporter. On this day, in addition to the days of rage controversy, there has been a shakeup in the Trump campaign. Paul Manafort has now been announced as the chief delegate counter for uh, Donald Trump. From 1981 to 1991, Manafort's business partner was none other than Roger Stone. So while Manafort works his magic inside the convention center, it'll be Stone applying the pressure from the outside, just as he likes it. Attack, 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 never defend. Roger is never dull. If you go to our website, cbsmiami.com, you can find out more information on Roger Stone and his new business, Growing Marijuana. We'll be right back after the break.